Does this sound familiar? Your deadline to finish a task is today. You need to find one line of text to help you find the root cause and you need it fast. You open the company's giant code base and start manually opening files, gripping others, sifting through directories, guessing by names. Things just get worse. So you turn to Git, you search there, but you have no idea how to tell it exactly what you need and it takes forever. What if you could search your entire code base before your coffee finishes dripping? RipGrep is a text search cheetah that outpaces Grep, Ack, and AG, the silver searcher in real projects, not just benchmarks. Developers, analysts, writers, faster search means faster learning, faster fixes, faster work. Multiple peer-reviewed studies on human attention found that even tiny delays raise stress and cut performance. Slow search costs you time and focus. Fast search gives it back. Now, here's the twist. I thought search is simple. You type a word, press enter, wait, that's it. But to me, the gap between good enough and instant is the gap between frustration and flow. RipGrip doesn't just find text, it filters noise, pops and highlights the results, it can provide context, search binaries, even gzipped files, and it returns everything with a blink of an eye. Let me show you how. Born in 2016, gaining more than 55,000 GitHub stars, it was initially named Rep, as in a shorter variant of Grep. Then it was Xrep, then Rustgrep or Rgrep in short, which already tells you what was used to build it, and eventually Rip was added to convey the message of a faster Grep. Now, Rip also suggests this. Now, Mr. Burnt Sushi claimed that this connotation was never his intention. Nevertheless, here's a humble suggestion for a new visual. In all seriousness though, RipGrep never was or will be 100% a drop-in replacement for Grep. What it is doing is offering great features at an incredible speed. Due to its popularity, it's almost synonymous with Grep itself. That said, RipGrep, not even for a second, suggests that it can replace Grep or intend to do that. It supports all platforms and available everywhere. And one thing you'd quickly notice if you go through the docs is the ever-going battle with its competitors. RG is similar to the Silver Searcher, Ack, and Grep, but these are the well-known ones. On the very top, it has a list of comparable tooling with benchmarks running against the entire Linux codebase, with tools like HyperGrep achieving half the speed and AG less than 20% of the speed of RipGrep, not even going into GitGrep and the likes. I would suggest exploring some of these because not only the different approaches are interesting, it's hard to find a utility that is as smart, fast, and powerful as RipGrep. Which begs the question, why are there so many alternatives, probably the most famous of which is AG, the Silver Searcher. Written in C used to be my personal go-to, but seemed to be losing both the battle of popularity as well as efficiency. And this may make some people angry, so I invite you to use the comment section as your nerve outlet. Back to RG, you're going to find two interesting sections. One is called why use RipGrep, and that's what this video is all about, but the other is why not use RipGrep, starting from the not so obvious point of can it replace Grep? And while it can, if you're automating, especially when working with servers, scripting and requiring edge cases of grep, RG is probably not the right tool for you. For this and other reasons, it's probably best to use it locally. And in some special cases, like a pre-baked CI runner that you know for a fact is going to have it. Although rip grep isn't POSIX compatible, not does it ever intend to be, so keep that in mind. For those of you who don't already have it installed, pick your favorite method and within five seconds, you'll become a happy rip grepper. Starting from the very basics, RG will take a word and a path to search in. This is every appearance of the word telegram in my project's readme. You'll notice it's both highlighted and showing the line number of the result. These are RG's same defaults that we can tweak later. It has auto-completion, which for me is handled by Carapace, which is helping with filtration and explanation of flags. Now, we've searched for a word. What if we either don't remember the term or want a partial string? RG treats any search term, unless mentioned otherwise, as regular expression making things incredibly convenient for search. So for example, let's use res and a backslash w plus, which in regex means one or more words like the search term, no special characters. If for example, we do the same, but with w followed by backslash b, which sets a boundary after one word like space, a punctuation character, or the end of a line, we get one result, not including progression above that doesn't have a boundary right after res. 
If you live in your terminal like I do, RipGrab makes it trivial to find anything in your repo instantly. But what if what you need isn't in your repo yet? Say you're building an AI data pipeline that fetches pricing, snapshots, or docs that change by region, hit rate limits, and dependent on geo variations. That's where this episode's sponsor comes in. Data Impulse gives you premium residential and mobile proxies with real availability, 90 million plus IPs across 195 locations, SOX 5 and HTTPS support, rotating or sticky sessions with custom duration up to 120 minutes and a snappy response time. You can even check how many proxies are available per location before you run. Pricing is simple, pay as you go, no expiry, residential proxies are just $1 per 1 gigabyte. Mobile proxies are $2 per 1 gigabyte, with discounts for larger volumes, and support is real humans 24-7. Go to dataimpulse.com, create an account, then in the dashboard you can generate credentials, pick your country or city, choose rotating or sticky, and drop those into the scraper or test harness. They don't resell other providers' pools, so you get consistent quality at a great price, and you can even manage usage and settings from your phone. That's dataimpulse.com. Now back to the video. This is not a regex video, but since RibGrip is working with them by default, you'll see quite a bit of them today, but they will be thoroughly explained. That said, I will have a dedicated regular expressions video pretty soon, so subscribe if you aren't to see some basics, as well as other cool tricks and major pitfalls if you don't want to step into one. As mentioned, since by default search terms are treated as regex, code dot, for example, is code and any character following it. But what if I am actually looking for code followed by a dot? Carapace to the rescue and fixed strings makes sure we get the string itself. Sometimes we want multiple expressions. Using hyphen e as many times as you like will build an or statement, like getting either telegram or run in the readme. And this will get all of them combined. If you find yourself listing too many of these expressions, you can actually send them to ribgrep as a file, a simple text file holding expressions. In this instance, just clear text to search as earlier. Then RG takes a file with a path and there we have it. Since it supports all level of regex complexity, if you're writing Go, for example, and would like all the unexported functions in your code, which Go conventionally starts with lowercase characters, there you have them laid in front of you. All findings conveniently grouped under the file name. Exported functions, anyone? Same deal, starting with uppercase letters and there they are. Now, so far we've been either searching for a single file or the entire code base, but RG can take specific directory names and search in them. Another cool feature it has is a default ignore of dot .files and directories. So if I try to find my GitHub action, like so, there's nothing to see. But adding the hidden flag searches hidden directories and does that recursively. It's important to mention. What if we're getting too many results to make sense? Max count can limit the results per file, like so, which you can play with to your liking. In some cases, even searching every code line in every file in the repo makes sense. Interestingly, if you pay attention, there is no line number 2, and that's because in Go files you keep an empty line after the package name and ripgrep filters everything out. The next feature is something I use almost every time I run RG, file globs. This is a simple one, finding all Go files, but we can expand it and asking for all results that are Go or Markdown or PEM files. And this gets us the cheeky go.mod file I forgot to filter. So throw that in and we're left with only text files. You won't believe how many times this alone helped me to comb through large repos, both private and work, realizing not only waste and strange files unintentionally committed, but also lines of code that were quite risky to be pushed like they have, but stayed hidden for years. One more flag you absolutely want to keep in mind is the one that lists the result files only. With C, you add a count of findings. And since in this case, we're not actually searching for anything, but rather any code, these are all the SQL, TOML, and text files on the repo with a number of code lines. With a search term like code, for example, you can get the files in a number of search term findings. But globs are good when you need a granular search. RG has a flag for file types. T takes the type as is and brings back all the results of all Go files, or files with a count adding C. You can also reverse the flag to capital T, which negates the search, i.e. everything but Go files. If you're like me and no grep flags by heart, you're probably familiar with I that turns off case sensitivity. But check this one out. Ripgrep has a smart case flag which comes from Vim and AG. And while Mr. Burn Sushi doesn't like the option, we're talking nine years ago, this is similar to ignore case. Also, when you know your expression but would like RG to work against it, invert match is an extremely useful flag doing that. 
So here's a not very useful search of all non-empty lines that don't have the at sign or, and this is where I do use it a lot, count the matches it finds. And if you only want files with matches, like containing the word code in them, you have the files with matches flags, which has an anti-flag of its own, files without match. Now here is one of my absolute favorite features of ripgrep. Remember we've searched for a GitHub action earlier? Here's a way to put your findings in context, adding one line surrounding the result with other code lines around it. You can expand the context as much as you want. This is a feature I know from so many logging utilities, normally called breadcrumbs, and tells you everything you need to know about this tool. It tries, beyond its only function, to do a smarter job and add the missing features in all others. So far, I'm guessing extremely useful applications, but are you ready for a small surprise? Ripgrep also comes with a search and replace utility, and this is where things become incredibly useful for those of you who are going to use it for automation. RG Telegram, R, and Instagram will do what you expect it would. Not an actual file replacement, in case you were wondering, just an inline result. Lastly, like any great modern utility, ripgrep answers .ripgrepRC for local configuration. For example, here are some settings with max columns searching hidden files by default, but ignoring Git and applying smart case everywhere. Instead of a .config file path, ripgrep picks whatever path you've set in the ripgrep config path environment variable. Once set, the next run will pick these up immediately. Immediately. Lastly, a great function for you hackers, or anyone really, who ever tried grepping for a binary, if you do happen to end up doing that with an unreadable file like this one, the text flag helps you search binaries with ease. There are lots of more quicks and interesting bits from the author in the FAQ, which I highly recommend for all users, like stats flag, telling you about the results, speed, bytes, consumed, etc. Or even the JSON output, if you're crazy enough. With ripgrep, you're faster than ever, but without proper regex skills, it's only revealing half the speed. Here's a quick regular expressions tutorial that covers everything you need and much more. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.